incredibly uh, important, and I know that this is gonna, that's going to be a focal point of what uh, the club is discussing uh, throughout the summer as you're looking at uh, your candidates for mayor and their positions on the issues. So I just want to take a few minutes to talk with you a little bit about uh, what it is uh, that my philosophy is when it comes to tenant issues and rent control. And I know we'll have the opportunity to have further discussions throughout the course of the summer, uh, and I look forward to that. But I just want to come in for a few minutes and talk with you uh, a little bit because I've had the good fortune of working with uh, many members of this club on uh, rent control issues and tenant prote protections. And irrespective of what happens in the endorsement process in this club and uh, whether I'm elected mayor or not or I'm city attorney, you can rest assured that we're going to continue to have a great working relationship because it's something that we have historically had uh, on tenant issues and rent control. And I've had the good fortune in my <coughs> nine and a half years as city attorney of being intimately involved in uh, protecting rent control and protecting affordable housing and working with many of you on assuring that we have strong tenant protections for the residents of our city. And I think that's important. I think it's important if you're going to maintain <clears throat> the diversity of San Francisco is to assure that we have affordable housing for everybody uh, in our city at a variety and at every level of the economic strata. And if you look at what I've had the opportunity to do working with many of you, we've worked in partnership on protecting affordable housing, protecting rent control, uh, <clears throat> assuring that we are working together to uh, uh, make sure that tenants have the most protection possible here in the city and county. I mean, we've done a lot of things in the city attorney's office over the course of the nine, uh, nine and a half years that I have been city attorney. But many of those issues have involved protecting affordable housing and uh, tenant protections. I'm very proud of the fact that we uh, defended affordable housing all the way up to the United States Supreme Court to uh, uh, protect our hotel conversion ordinance and to make sure that people cannot unscrupulously get around the law by just tran uh, transferring um, uh, residential hotels to uh, tourist hotels. If you look at what I have done as city attorney, it has reflected my philosophy. When I first became city attorney, uh, we had a fairly robust code enforcement team. I doubled the size of that code enforcement team uh, in the course of my tenure as city attorney. And despite all the budget cuts that we have had, that number uh, of personnel and resources that I devote to code enforcement has never been reduced. And they are the folks on the front lines who have worked with many of you on the issues that are of incredible importance. I can tell you right now, Tommy and I and others worked very closely in bringing about what is possibly the greatest victory that we could secure when we went after City Apartments, Skyline, and uh, the Lembys, and look what happened. We basically broke up their business model. They are no longer taking advantage of tenants, no longer unscrupulously uh, uh, without permit, just violating every uh, DBI rule in the book to uh, transfer uh, facilities and, and, and rooms to the detriment of tenants. And we got potentially $10 million out of them to boot. That was important. That was due to a lot of the work done by many of you uh, in this room. So, hotel conversion, uh, co-enforcement efforts, um, the Lemby case. Working with many of you more recently to assure that we continue to enforce our DBI regs, health and safety regs, and what we most recently did to sue the U.S. government so we could make sure that we had postal delivery in uh, residential hotels in the Tenderloin. I had hoped that we would have had uh, a result by now. I would have hoped that we would have had resolution by now. We haven't. But uh, we're continuing uh, that fight. Two years ago, in the midst of the foreclo foreclosure crisis, uh, we worked with DBI and others to let tenants know in a public way what your rights are uh, when you have a building that's going to go into foreclosure under state law. We published that, and then we worked with DBI, Deborah Walker was a leader in that, and putting us in touch with folks, to make sure that we uh, protected by invoking a state of emergency so that people's uh, utilities and electricity would not be shut off in the midst of 
uh, a, a foreclosure of a building. So these are the kind of issues that have been a priority for me as city attorney. And I think that it speaks to what it is we do in the city attorney's office to use the law each and every day to make a positive uh, impact in the lives of tenants. And it's something that I take seriously, we take seriously in the city attorney's office, and I will continue to take seriously as long as I'm city attorney or uh, in any other office that I may hold. So uh, I look forward to having a discussion with you through the course of the summer, but I just wanted to sort of talk with you a little bit. I know you've been given uh, a document which I think is sort of appropriate considering the panel that you had tonight because it gives you some sense as to what the city attorney's office contribution is going to be uh, in assuring that we have tenant protections because let me tell you what's in that document isn't just my view that is a view that has been come down and is permeates the organization and I know we've had a great relationship working on tenant issues for our code enforcement team and it's something that uh, I'm committed to doing and my office is committed to doing so I thank you for your time and if you have any questions I'm happy to take them. thanks very much let's take a couple from uh, uh, the panel and then we'll a couple from uh, the audience <laughs> Brian or Tommy you got a question for Dennis I do. Not, not really. yes, <laughs> um, so, if you were to become mayor, um, what uh, is on the forefront of your uh, tenant agenda? What would you want to conquer? Well, I think that, I don't know if it's, I, what I want to do is protect. Mm -hmm. And I think it's incredibly important that we continue to speak for um, tenant protection and that we don't take, um, we don't take we don't move policies that are going to decrease tenant protection. I happen to believe that one of the, the good things that we had in terms of expanding, instead of just seeing a diminution of rent control, right, That's what to I'm see talking. the expansion of uh, protections was, let's just look at the Trinity Project. The Trinity Project was an example of how when you work in a public way collaboratively, um, we can work together to, uh, to protect tenant protections. Now, I know there's a lot of people <coughs> that were willing to come to the table despite the fact that they weren't crazy about the San Giacomo's in the beginning. But we understood that it was important to protect tenants and to sit at the table and negotiate and working with Chris Daly, I was very happy to do that. We secured protections for tenants. But what I think was most important is that you had a perspective of policymakers sitting at the table, bringing tenant representatives to the table too, early on in a collaborative way to assure that tenants were protected. And that is something that's going to continue to be a priority for me. Oh, my name is Teresa, and um, I just um, know that general assistance gives $422 for housing, and um, what you're going to create if you're a mayor. Um, where people can get general assistance and actually rent a studio for $420 and get their food money and be able to exist. Because ideally that's what the city is giving for housing, yet there is no such place that exists. That's true. Well, what I, I think I mean, that, you know, I'm just amping up the game here. So. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> hey, thanks for the question. And I want to make sure that we're working together to figure out ways to provide housing opportunities for folks. Because you shouldn't have to go out and for thousands of bucks, you have to, is the only way you're going to be able to rent something. You can't, I mean, that's to me not a city that is maintaining diversity. So, or bring people together, bring people together. where they can yeah. room together in some system. I agree. And and we've got to figure out ways to, to, to make that work. Thank you. Terry and then Deborah yeah. and Steve. Okay. John? Hi, um, you mentioned two campaigns, the mailbox campaign and the city apartment, city stop campaign. Yes. And I wanted to tell you, I think I just told you earlier, like I was involved in both those campaigns. No, you were. You and the, and the city stop campaign, I sat in front of my computer for hours and hours and got a lumbar problem um, doing all the CUD <coughs> research. And, and I just have to say, for someone to sit and do all that work and to see what they've done come to a fruition, in, in, in both those instances, in the, in the manner that you know, you've taken the uh, initiative on. And I have one concern about you and the recent <laughs> quote that was in the examiner. And I would like to know why you think that, um, um, I can't remember his name, what's his name, Newsom's uh, choice of Gascon as district attorney was a stellar decision. You know, mm -hmm. saying, and I would like you to explain that. <laughs> um, 
That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, have colleagues that are appointed, as a matter of general courtesy, you, what generally I do, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And um, uh, I, when he was named, I complimented uh, the mayor on his choice because I happen to believe that as a matter of uh, just uh, general comedy and, um, and uh, uh, encouragement, I didn't have the choice, but you know, I was going to issue him good luck and goodwill to do a good job and welcome, welcome him to the city attorney, as it were. He's a colleague. I worked with the DA's office on a lot of things. And I didn't think that it would really breed good relations for me to say, hey, you know what, I think the guy's a terrible choice. I don't think we'd be really getting along that well. So I always yeah, think it's you better could have to... have given him all that encouragement without calling him a stellar choice. <laughs> and I, I'm not the only one concerned about that. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Carrera. No, and that was, that was the reason for me. I was uh, I'm welcoming him to the fraternity of elected officials and uh, wishing him goodwill uh, as he was assuming the new position. That was my motivation for Steve? You think uh, the city's tenant protections as they exist are adequate? Rent control law and other protections are adequate as they exist? Uh, or do you think they need improvement? If you think they're adequate, you've already explained that you're interested in protecting them. If you don't think they're adequate, what ideas do you have about I, expanding? I think there's always th we can do a lot of things at the state level, which I think that it is important. Because so I, I mean, obviously, if everything was totally adequate, we'd have an adequate supply of uh, rental housing for uh, affordable for, for people. And there are things that we need to continue to fight for at the state level. Many of the challenges that we're facing in the tenant area are, are because of uh, state law, and I think we have to take a, 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 a strong, aggressive look at what we can do to uh, <clears throat> ensure that the Ellis Act isn't putting people out in the street and continue to fight at the state level and see those areas where we're not preempted. Are there other things that we could do to protect uh, tenants? And based on my record of uh, being the city attorney, where I've tried to be as aggressive as I can in terms of prosecuting and defending, that's something that I'm going to be committed to, to doing and working with constituent groups. Uh, to, to maximize the protections that we're having for folks. Deborah? City Attorney, um, I really do appreciate the work that you've done on behalf of the tenants with DBI. I think that we have probably litigated more cases against uh, scoff law landlords than in, since I can remember. So um, it's been good working with your office on that. Um, that being said, the issues that we continue to have with the Housing Authority um, and the habitability issues yeah. in those properties. It's true. Um, it, I, we, we are, and it, right now, it's the more that we try and intervene to, to encourage and help them enforce yeah. our code, the more they push back, especially on the nonprofits actually that do our, our work for us. Yeah. And so, is there anything that you've thought of to actually reel in the housing authority? Let me tell you about um, that. You, that's a very, very good point. Because I, I ran into it when I sued the nation's largest Section 8 housing provider, AIMCO, yeah. for their right. the terrible condition yeah. of their thing, where we got, I think it was three million bucks in the settlement, I used some of that as a seed money for the very first <laughs> Boys and Girls Club in the Baby Hunters Point. But they did raise a legitimate concern during the course of the litigation. They said, hey, what are you coming after me when... <laughs> Right down the street, there are housing authority places that are in worse shape than mine. And that was, they were right. So um, we started to put pressure on HUD and the housing authority to improve the conditions <coughs> of uh, those properties. And we started to negotiate different agreements. We did negotiate agreements with them. Where with they, DBI, which they haven't signed. And okay, well that's what's, okay. So, I am committed to, because I'm committed to continuing that. Okay. And I think it's important, because remember we worked on that, yeah. and thank you for reminding, I didn't know what the status was. So, uh, I think that the Housing Authority <coughs> properties should be held to the same standards that I hold other property owners to. I mean, that's just fair, and that's right for tenants, and you have my 100% commitment that we will continue to work on it. And I believe if we look to, I, I can send you the link to the case. Yeah. I think Rhode Island sued their local housing authority, and then 
the courts gave the enforcement power back to the city, okay. which they we don't have now. Right. It's and we were trying to, put, if I recall, Deborah, we tried to put pressure on them by me threatening. Right. And then they 